today we will be dealing with the topic structure of eye or anatomy of the eye first we will study about the walls of the eye and then its internal structures okay so first we said the walls of the eye or coat of the eye and then the internal structures so i am just taking the eye from here and putting it over the wall so how it will be now i am drawing the outermost coat or the protective coat of the eye this is the outermost coat of the eye and this is known as sclera actually this posterior most 5 by 6 area is known as sclera this is the protective layer of the eye or the outermost layer of the eye and it is a opaque layer and is a very tough membrane or a very tough layer and it is known as sclera it lies in the posterior 5 by 6 area of the eye okay and in anterior 1 by 6 area here we are having a transparent membrane and it is known as cornea okay so now we studied about the outermost layer of the eye that is a protective layer of the eye and it is having two parts the first one is sclera the posterior 5 by 6 area of it is known as sclera and the anterior 1 by 6 of the area it is transparent and it is known as cornea clear that is the first or outermost coat of the eye its duty is to protect the internal structures then comes the second layer or the middle layer of the eye so i am drawing the second layer it just lies inside this sclera or the outermost layer this is the second layer it is a vascular layer it is having high blood vessels so it is a vascular layer and its duty is to provide nutrition to the eye so it is also known as nutritive layer of the eye it is a highly vascular membrane so there will be so much vessels or blood vessels going into the eye so it provides the nutrition to the eye it is known as uveal tract uveal tract clear so this uveal tract is what i have drawn it is having three parts so this posterior most part which lies along with the sclera it is known as choroid the posterior most part of the uveal tract is known as choroid as it moves anteriorly it just get thickened or just get enlarged like this okay and it is known as ciliary body it is known as ciliary body so the choroid is moving forward and at the anterior side it just get thickened and it is known as ciliary body and a small vascular diaphragm like structures just extends inside the eye okay this is the vascular diaphragm like structure that is extending inside the eye and it is known as iris it is known as iris so now we are studying about the second layer of the eye or the vascular coat of the eye it is a middle layer its name is uveal tract the posterior surface of this uveal tract it is known as choroid and as the choroid moves forward it gets thickened and this thickened area is known as ciliary body 
then a vascular diaphragm just extends from this ciliary body to inwards and that is known as iris. I think the middle layer is clear now. Now we are going to the third layer or the most important layer of the eye. It is retina. Retina is the nervous layer of the eye. Okay. So I am drawing the retina. The retina just lies inside this second layer or the uveal tract. Okay. Actually this retina is also having two layers. So at first we studied about the outermost layer which is sclera plus cornea. We told that it is the protective layer of the eye. Its function is to protect the eye. Then we studied about the second layer or the middle layer of the eye. It is the vascular layer and it is known as uveal tract. And now we are dealing with the innermost layer of the eye and it is known as retina. It is the nervous layer. Actually, the nutrition provided by this uveal tract and the protection provided by this sclera is mostly for the retina, the innermost important layer. And now we are studying about the two parts of retina. Two parts of retina. So, this one thing that I have drawn which is closely related to this choroid is known as pigmented layer of retina. That is pigmented layer of retina okay it is highly pigmented and it is having a close relationship with the choroid or the underneath layer okay it will extend along with this choroid moves forward and also will be present behind this ciliary body as well as behind this iris clear this pigmented layer of the retina moves along with the choroid inside and then moves anteriorly behind the ciliary body as well as behind the iris. That is what pigmented layer of retina is. The second layer is known as, it is the sensory layer of the retina or we can say it is a neural layer of the retina. So it lies inside, it is the innermost layer and it lies inside this pigmented layer of the retina. Okay, I am drawing it in a black color. Okay, this is the innermost, is the sensory layer of the retina or nervous layer of the retina. So here, sorry, neural layer of the retina. So I am just dividing this into two, okay, the side into two. Just consider, I am just dividing it into two. This one is the corneal section and this layer, can you see, I will draw it in a different color so it will be much more clear. Okay, I will draw it in a blue color. So I have divided the eye into two. Just to make you the concept much more clear, consider this as the corneal section, this thing and this is the corneoscleral junction, okay. That is the junction between the sclera and the cornea. So, it is known as corneoscleral junction and this sensory retina or neural retina will terminate an area just in between these two sections. This layer will terminate in between these two sections somewhere your iris but the pigmented layer of the retina will extend at behind the ciliary body as well as the iris. These are the codes of the eyeball okay I think it is clear. Actually the inner layer or the sensory layer of the retina is having rods and cones. Rods and cones are the light sensitive receptor light receptors okay. We will tell about it later. So, they are the light receptors and uh, this sensory retina or the neural retina contain this 
rods and cones. The rods and cones are not present in the pigmented layer of the retina. Actually, why we, we, we should know why this layer is pigmented, right? It is because when the light enters to the eye, it should not be reflected back. If it is white, what happens? White color always reflect the lights back, right? So, since it is highly pigmented, it will not reflect the light back. It helps in absorbing the light. Clear? So, now we have studied about the walls of the eye, okay? Now, we will study about the internal structures. So, almost here, we are having a structure known as crystalline lens okay crystalline lens it is a major part of our eye so we know it is lying here behind the iris so it can't stand there by its own right something should hold it there so suspensory ligament that connects this lens to our ciliary body this is a suspensory ligament that is connecting the lens to the ciliary body actually the, it is known as zonules okay the suspensory ligament is known as zonules this zonules helps the lens to stand in its correct position it holds the lens there okay and this lens is connected to this ciliary body by this zonules actually this area behind the lens this area is filled with a jelly like substance okay a jelly like substance and it is known as vitreous humor it is known as vitreous humor clear and the area in front of this lens that is in between the lens and iris as well as in between the iris and our uh, cornea there is a space and this space is filled with aqueous humor okay aqueous humor actually this aqueous humor is a fluid like material okay this is a jelly like substance and aqueous humor is fluid like substance clear so this is how our eye is actually the duty of the vitreous humor is to give the shape to our eye it will provide the actual shape of our eye so when light enters to the eye it will passes the cornea then the aqueous humor and passes through the area between this iris the area between this iris is known as pupil actually it is a free space okay uh, if you need to see it just uh, light a torch into a eye so you can see a center very dark black color uh, area that is what pupil is so light just enters to the pupil actually this iris is having some muscles that helps in controlling the size of this pupil okay so this uh, light will enter to the pupil then through the lens and finally it reaches to the retina so in this sensory retina we already said that Sensory retina is having rods and cones. Rods and cones are the photoreceptors. So, actually the light is a electromagnetic energy, right? It comes in electromagnetic spectrum. So, it is an electromagnetic energy. Uh, as it moves inward and reaches through the rods and cones, what happens is that it just converts this electromagnetic energy into electropotential energy okay and uh, the main duty of rods and cones is that that uh, it will uh, convert the electromagnetic energy to electropotential energy and this is transferred through our optic nerve to our brain or central nervous system clear from here the light detection will be possible now we are going to study about the blood supply okay blood supply to our eyeball actually the main blood supply to our eye come from the ophthalmic artery consider this as the ophthalmic artery okay so the main blood supply to our eye come from the ophthalmic artery so this is a branch from it that is moving inside our optic nerve and reaches our retina and 
give blood supply to this structure to the retina. So, it is known as central retinal artery because it is entering to the uh, through the center of the optic nerve and supplying blood to the retina ok. So, it is known as central retinal artery that is the first one. Then second one another branch it will not enter the eye through the optic nerve it enters through the outside the optic nerve and then enter to the eye reaches to the choroid and extend some more anteriorly ok and supplies the choroid. It will not supply or extend up to the ciliary body or iris. So, it will not supply to ciliary body or iris. It will only supply to the choroid. So, it is known as short posterior ciliary artery. Actually, it is short right. It is not extending up to ciliary body of iris. So, it is short and it entered the eye from the posterior aspect. So, it is posterior ciliary artery. Clear? It is the second one. Let me draw the same at the upper surface also. Okay. Then comes the third one that is it also enters the eye from the posterior aspect, enters the choroid, moves anteriorly and supplies and will extend up to here ok. It will supply the ciliary body as well as the iris. So, comparatively it is long right. This only the second one or the short posterior ciliary artery extend only up to choroid but this will extend up to ciliary body and supply ciliary body and iris right. So, comparatively it is long and it enters the eye from the posterior aspect. So, posterior ciliary artery. So, it is known as long posterior ciliary artery the third one ok the third one and then one more branch is there just consider this as the our extra ocular muscles ok this is the extra ocular muscles of our eye ok. So, this branch will enter through the extra ocular muscles and then extend up to the ciliary body and supplies our iris as well as the ciliary body. So, this is entering to our eye from the anterior aspect right. So, it is known as anterior ciliary artery. The fourth one is anterior ciliary artery. The first one was central retinal artery because it entered to the eye through the, uh, the center of the optic nerve and supplies the retina. Then came the short posterior ciliary artery. It enters from the posterior aspect and it only uh, supplied the choroid that means it is short. Then comes the long posterior ciliary artery because it enters from the posterior aspect and then it extends up to our ciliary body clear. Then comes the anterior ciliary artery because it enters through the eye through the uh, extraocular muscles or anterior aspect and supplies the ciliary body and also the iris. This is the basic structure of the eye and its blood supply. I think the topic is clear. Today we have studied about the balls of the eye and the structures inside the eye that is the internal structures. We have just studied about the basics of it and then the blood supply. So, this is all together a small description of our eye or the anatomy of the eye. In the coming classes we will be studying about each part in details. Till then bye.